Patty Pimblet gets it done again. Shaky first round, kind of similar to what happened in the first fight. Wasn't as hurt as he was in the first fight, but took a big shot, went for the takedown, and ultimately got Vargas to play his own game. People seem to mistake that Patty Pimblet is some kind of like pure striker. Even though as powerful as he is, he's so durable, he's scrappy, always has the ability to come back in a fight. His grappling is super dangerous. That's where he excels at. And you showed it here against Vargas. And not only were the skills different when it came to the grappling, it also came down to a bit of fight IQ, making decisions in the octagon. Even though Vargas is nine years older than Patty, Patty. Patty is more experienced and that came a long way for this fight because Rodrigo Vargas is not necessarily a grappler on that level. He's more of a striker than anything else. Definitely has a lot of power in his hands and you saw that in the fight when he connected on Patty with the right hook. It was a bit of a wild exchange. They're both trying to hit each other missing. Vargas has a short stature. He's able to get under the punches and really dip his head to the sides on the outside of Patty's punches but Patty showed he could take Vargas is biggest shot, man. That's the thing about Patty Pimbley. He's super durable, but he doesn't want to make a habit of getting hit in every single fight because getting hit like that is not good for longevity. You're not going to be able to have a long-lasting career going to wars, getting clipped, getting hurt, especially when you're young. When you're young and you're getting hit like this, you're not going to have a chin when you get older, when you hit your prime. Now, the difference with the decisions of the fight was Rodrigo Vargas was able to get the fight to the ground, right? Due to Patty's failed takedown attempt. Patty has no problem being off his back. It wasn't a thing. But as he was able to stand up, literally just wall walk on the cage Vargas at wrist control on Patty's left arm he never wanted to disengage it's kind of similar to what we saw with Nikita Krylov when he fought Paul Craig he didn't disengage and fight his fight he wanted to play Patty's game maybe try to make some kind of point but you can't make a point against Patty like that the guy's way too dangerous and ultimately, when he was standing up against the cage, leaning on Patty and have a very narrow stance, you heard Patty's corner telling him to trip him out. It was an easy sweep. He was able to roll over Vargas. Instantly, when it got to the ground, you saw Vargas's confidence go out the window. What he initially did was he locked Patty down a little bit with the double butterfly hooks and pulling down with the double underhooks. Essentially breaking posture and also elevating him. This can create a big opportunity for Vargas to escape through the back door, try to scramble out of this position if he's able to elevate him. But Patty was simply able to just push away on Vargas, break those double underhooks, and immediately when this happened, you saw Vargas abandon everything. He let go of the butterflies, he didn't try to break posture again, he didn't try to reposition, and even looked like he may have panicked, knowing how dangerous Patty is. If Patty's gonna break his grip, he knows where this fight is potentially going to go. But ultimately, he gave it up to Patty. He gave his back up to a submission artist. That showed right there the difference in decision making between the two guys. Even though Vargas seemed to be the better striker, as long as it lasted on the feet, that's not to say if they were to fight again that Patty wouldn't get the better of him on the feet, but in this fight specifically, Vargas got the better shots in. And Patty knew that's not his world anymore. He has to try to take this fight to the ground using higher fight IQ. Whereas Vargas, he has success in his own world. He refused to go back to it. And look where he ended up because of that. Patty made the right decisions, whereas Vargas did not. And that's what and that's what makes a better fighter. Now, Vargas was trying to grab that left arm. He was trying to control it so he could stay away from getting choked by Patty. But what do you notice Patty do? He momentarily leans on one elbow. This allows more rotation from the pull his arm back away from Vargas' grip. So Vargas is not going to be able to reach around himself like that. And then he throws his arm under the chin and gets off of his elbow to attack that rear naked choke, and that was ultimately the end of it. It was a straightforward fight for Patty Pimblett, and it was a great win for him, just cannot get hit like this. There's a lot of criticism in the MMA community about Patty's striking ability, and him getting hit like this is not proving a good point, because he should not be getting hit by someone like Vargas, he should not be getting hit by someone like Luigi. If he's getting hit by these guys on the track that he's on, he's a star in the sport, they're going to try to put him up pretty quickly. You don't want to fight a top 15 opponent or someone just outside the top 15 like uh, Gwonko Deladze and have these kind of mistakes. He's phenomenal on the ground, but striking wise, the defense is just not all there. And ultimately, who should he fight next? What makes the most sense, and already has a build up, is him versus Ilya Tapuria. Tapuria is a featherweight, but he went up to 155 tonight, and he looked pretty good against Jai Herbert, got hurt, but ultimately showed to be the more skilled striker the further the fight went. So he has shown to be somewhat susceptible probably to bigger fighters. And even though Ilya wants the fight, Patty kind of turned it down. And that's something that Conor McGregor never did. That's something like the bigger stars never did in their careers. They never turned down a specific fighter. If someone were to ask Conor, would you fight Ilya Taporia with all that same build up? He would never have said that he wouldn't fight him or he doesn't care what Ilya thinks. He would say, I will knock everybody out. It doesn't matter who's in front of me. You could bring Ilya. You can bring this guy. You can bring that guy. I'm going to knock them out. That's how you respond to that kind of thing. Saying that you don't care about Ilya's opinion and you don't care about him, that's not going to win all the fans over. So marketing-wise, that might not have been a good angle because he never called any other fighter out. He never said he wanted to fight another fighter. It seemed like he just turned down one guy. 
If you're going to turn down someone, at least say who you want to fight next. But man, that's the fight I would like to see next. It might be too early for Patty to fight someone like Ilya. So of course, I understand if the organization doesn't want that yet. Maybe build it up a little bit more. Maybe throw it together later down the road. But if you throw someone like Ilya Tapuria at someone like Patty Pimblet right now, you could potentially have Patty lose too early in his career. Because honestly, I do favor Ilya to win for sure, 100%. On the ground, it's competitive. On the feet, it's not. 